Shed Town by Tony Pitts. Episode 1 Something's Gonna Change. In the North Country, a V shaped valley, a clough, and down on the river shelf stands a forge. The crumbling stones of a once mighty engined empire where iron and coke and limestone and clay once merged. Long silent, then saved by Colin. An industrial museum, visitor attraction, where 20 years ago children too young to be bored were led by indifferent, bearded, corduroy teachers puffing on school trip fags. But the schools don't come now. They now have virtual interactive experiences in resource suites. And Colin, a word that his idea is dying a slowly, silent, embarrassing death, sits in his brown office and contemplates life's hard mysteries. The nature of things, of existence and non-existence, and light and infinity. No one comes, and no one's ever coming again. And in the Iron Fillings Cafe, the tiny lunatic community that staff his failure have been asked to gather at the end of another silent day. I only had a text from Yvonne, haven't I? She's coming around tonight for a talk. I knew it. Didn't I say she'd come back, get things sorted, get back to normal? <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, mate. I made up for you. Oh, I knew she would. Hello, Barry. Hello, Diane. Hello, Jimmy. Hi, Diane. Hello, Barry. So what's this meeting about, Jimmy? I don't know, no. well, Nothing good, that's for sure. What do you mean, Barry? Well, we're in trouble, aren't we? It's obvious. With the police? Why would we be in trouble with the police? We call it. It's Colin Cross. Not the business. This business. I've done one tour it last two weeks. That bloke with a kid with a giant head. Last Tuesday that were. And that's for the money back and all. We can't go on like this. Here, I'll put a couple of spads in there. Take us. Oh yeah, we'll have them for us tea, won't we, Dave? Oh yeah. What fillings do you want? Oh, I'll have potato. Potato filling, Dave? Yeah, I'll have same. Uh, butter? Oh no, I prefer the potato. You have the butter, Dave, then we can swap. Get a bit of both. <laughs> in Colin's office, with the walls getting ever closer, Colin thinks about light and atoms and what bonds them, occasionally flicks his eyes to see the office clock not going round. Hello, Blakely Industrial Music. Have you told them? Uh. No, I, I, I'm going to. I'm just about to go and tell them. In a minute. Well, don't put it off, Colin. They need to be told. Yeah, 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 I know. I will. Put the phone down and go and tell them. Now. Come in. Oh, William. William Pashnell. A one surly roust about. Now the roust is out. And he's only the surly. Right. I've put rat poison down. Uh, boss, about this meeting. Do we have to come? Only thing is, uh, I've got a lamb shank on a low light. Yeah, yeah, I've got to come. So listen, if you want to pop round to the cafe, William, I'll, I'll follow you on in a minute. Ah, OK. In a, in a minute. So here they gather in Jimmy's piss-poor wet fart of an English eatery. Dave and Diane, drippy, dopey, daft, like two border terriers brought together to copulate on a Pennine lawn, too gormless to know what's expected. Or that the terriers, or dogs but both with waggy tails and the clear eyes of the blissfully ignorant. And Jimmy, directionless and deluded, convinced he can be saved by a woman, untouchable now, as he waits the return of the sainted Yvonne. And Barry, who refused to be crushed by the wheels of industry, but hid in his history instead. Barry's got a sniff of death in his nostrils, paces like an expectant father, or a first-time pantomime dame. Then... Right, you're all here. Good. Right then, I'll, uh, I'll come straight to the point. I doubt it. I think it's this. I, I've been to the bank. I spoke to the bank manager. I have physical bank manager. I'm with the accountants and we've looked at all the figures. All money in, money out, that sort of... Well, it's very difficult, but... As I say... We're closing down, aren't we, Colin? Um, yeah. Yeah, we have to. When? 
No. Bleeding hell. You're joking, aren't you? You're bloody joking. What am I going to do, eh? Where am I going to live? You're telling me I'm losing my job and my house at five o'clock on a Friday all tea right, time. William. It's not all right. It's not bloody all right. I'm sorry. Look, I'm really sorry. All of you have worked... worked hard. Could I ask a question, Colin? Yes, Diane, of course. When you say we're closing down, what exactly do you mean? Jesus Christ. It means we've no jobs. We're closing down. What, even gift shop? Of course the bloody gift shop. Who's going to buy your bloody rubbish if we're closing down? Well, but what about the works do? I mean, it's mm. tomorrow, isn't it? I mean, we always have works do, don't we? We always do, don't we ever do? We've saved up, haven't we, dear? Yeah, but under the present circumstances, I really don't think we should go. No, she's right. We should go. Like she says, we always have the works out in, don't we? I love it at sea, so me. I'm seeing something and that, I love it. We both do, don't we, Diane? Yeah. Jimmy and Barry's last drive home in Jimmy's runabout. And as they talk of their wives and their lives, it's Jimmy's delusion that is a San Andreas fault between them. Do you know what, Barry? I think this could actually be quite a good thing. It's definitely time for me and Yvonne to have a new start. What did she say in the text? Hey, oh, uh, she said, and I quote, Jimmy, can I see you tonight? We need to talk. Kiss. Well, God only knows what Nicky's going to say. Well, she won't say anything, will she? She'll shout and rant and bloody rave. She's been for an audition today. Well, I say audition, more like a cattle market. Housewife to eye life. <laughs> Jesus. Here we are then, mate. Listen there. I'm giving the outing tomorrow a miss, I think. You're joking? Yeah, I know. I just want to get settled back with Yvonne, you know, catch up, chill out, you know, just be normal. Yeah, well, I'm going. It doesn't seem real, this, does it? It's not really sunk in. Eleven years we've been there, Jim. Yeah. I probably shouldn't go on the dim. No, no. I should. I'm better off out of her way, aren't I? Right, I'll see you to... Well, I'll see you. Sir Bob. I'll call you. What's all this? It's your stuff. Listen, Nick, I've got something to tell you. I've something to tell you and all. There's your stuff. I've put you some clothes in that suitcase, and there's a kettle and some bits and bobs for you to eat. What are you on about? I want you out. You can kip in shed till you get yourself sorted. Spend most of your life in there any road. I've had enough. Not that you'll be interested, but I got through my audition today. I'm down to the last 500 in the Yorkshire region and I aren't having you hold me back no more. It's any more, not no more. Stop picking me up all the time, bleeding smart arse you are. Are you listening to me? I'm dead serious. It's over, Barry. I'm following my destiny from now on. Here, you can take your scruffy bloody dog with you. Ernie, come here! You can come in and use downstairs bog, but that's it. There you go. Yvonne! Hey, you look fantastic. What are you ringing the bell for? It's your own house. Come in, come in, come in. Come here. Give us a hug. Hello, Jimmy. Listen, this won't take long. Hey, do you want a cuppa? I, I, I just put a kettle on. Look, this is really hard, Jimmy. Really, really hard. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. We'll be okay. Jimmy, I'm with Andrew. What? Oh, oh what? The, the vicar. <laughs> Andrew the vicar. What, what do you mean you're with him? Can't see him. <laughs> no, he's outside in the car. What's he doing out? Oh! He's giving you a lift from your sisters, right? You should have said no, I could have come... Jimmy, I'm with Andrew. I want a divorce. Barry! Barry! What the bloody... Is that you, Jimmy? I'm in here, mate, in the shed. Can I come in? Of course you can. Stop chucking stones at window. 
Come on. Sit down. Any shift. What's up, Jimmy? She's gone, Barry. She's, she's gone off with that happy, clappy, twitchy bollocks. What? Yvonne. She's marrying into the church. She's, she's run off with that vicar. She am. Oh, Jesus, mate, I'm sorry. What a bloody day. Well, why'd she left me? I mean, if she knew what she's done to me, she wouldn't do it. I know she wouldn't. Maybe maybe it's brainwashing, you know? Like a cult or something. A C of E, yeah. Yeah, they're a cult, aren't they? Cult of mumblers. Me and Nicky's packed up and all. What? What's going on? Oh, don't worry. I couldn't be more happy. You get what you think you deserve in this life, don't you? I deserve more than playing second fiddle to Lena bloody Zavaroni. It'll be all right, mate. It will. I feel like I'm going mad. I do. I should day out tomorrow, mate. Seaside, fresh air. It does a world of good. We'll have a good time. Yeah. We will. Something's going to change, mate. It has to. When horizons are built On words you wish you had said Sadness are in the two roads ahead. Black up! It's not black, it's dark blue, plus it's a van, not a car. Are we not counting vans then, William? No, we're not. How many times do I? Have? Black car! No, don't count, I'm talking. Oh, I can see the sea! When you open that door and that break hits your head, it's goodbye to this world. Goodness, we're here. I was getting cabin fever. Hey, what a beautiful day. Fresh air, Jimmy lad, nothing like it. How are you feeling? Oh, well, you know, glad to be here, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Colin's not said a word, is he? I think he's been crying. Yeah, I know. Beautiful day, Col. Lovely sunshine. Huge celestial powerhouse. Five billion years ago, a nebula, vast clumps of hydrogen and dust and... Yeah. It's a nice day, yeah. Right, folks, I'm nipping over to Whiteley Sands to chemist. Oh, we've only just got here, William. Aye, well, try telling me testicles that. They're on bloody fire. Dobby's itch. I'll be back later. He's charming, isn't he, William? Oh, look at it all, all sunshiny and seaside. I bloody love it. Oh, we both do, don't we? Let's get down that beach, Dave. Let's go and have a puddle. Paddle? Yes, a puddle in the sea. Oh, look at that. Look at that donkey. Look at that man. What's up with him? Come on, Dave. Down the near vertical cobbled road that bends past parlours and pubs, knick-knack shoppery and stooping tea rooms to the beach, and there in the distance, sitting astride a donkey, almost on its arse in a slow motion collapse, sits Father Michael O'Donnell, a corpulent mess of a man, a tortured, unstable, destructive priest, held together by a dog collar and a litre of vodka a day, being led by Wes, a one-legged force of nature, who lies like a cheap watch. Oh, hey, he's only got one leg, Dave. Oh, look at Vicar and all. He's a big fatty, isn't he? Hello, hello, hello. How goes the day? Uh, very good, thank you, Vicar. I'm a servant of the Holy See, my son. Oh, well, you look like Jesus on that donkey. Uh, a big fat Jesus with no beard, all white dress, all lights round your head. <laughs> uh, but, but I have the sandals. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is my friend, Wes. Could we interest you in our famous donkey dinosaur trail? Donkey dinosaurs? Trail. Wes here will lead you along the way, hopping in the footsteps of dinosaurs. Oh, we'd love to do that, wouldn't we, Dave? But you've only got one donkey, though. No problem. She's as strong as an ox as her, Jenny. Climb aboard, climb aboard. Go on, up oh. you get. Lovely so. Oh. There you go. Off you go now, Ed. Oh, would, would do we pay you, Father? No, give it me. 
It's 20 quid. 20 quid? Yes, but that's for the two of you, and you'll be stepping back 65 million years. Now that's a bargain, wouldn't you say? Go on, enjoy! <laughs> and slowly, unsteadily, Jenny ears up the hillside, while Wes hops side to side to take the stinger to the slope. And as an incredulous Barry and Jimmy gape agog, Colin stares long and hard out to sea. Hello, gentlemen. A day trip? An outing, is it? Yes, Father. Worst do. No, it's not. Not now. <laughs> Look at them go. A Pennoin Mary and Joseph so. So what does the day hold, fellas? What salty delights? Uh, who knows? But we'll be up the Mitchell Arms, that's for sure. Nice bit of grab, perhaps a small schooner of sherry. Indeed. I reside at the Mitchell Arms. Do you? I have a mobile home in the car park. A, a caravan, if you will. Oh, right. Comfy, is it? It was. Meanwhile, on the trail... <laughs> so, uh, w what sort of fossils have you found up here then, Wesley? Found an elbow and some lips <laughs> off a tyrannosaur. Lips, you say? <laughs> yeah. I lost my leg up here. Oh, heck, how did you do that? In a knife fight, I rumble with some crips from Brid. Crisps? Crips. Gangsters. I killed two of them. <gasps> oh, I'm the O'Reilly. And on they go, and back they come. And now all gather by the sea, as William Passional approaches, testicles clarted in a soothing pomodor, carrying a T-square, set square, and front side elevations. It's time for the annual challenge. Right then, sandcastle contest. The usual rules apply, though why you lot bothers beyond me. You can't beat me, you never will. Yeah, well, it's the second part, isn't it, William? Does it have to be a castle? Of course it does. It always is. Oh, I was just thinking of doing a mermaid. Not a chance. Well, I won't be doing a castle this year. I want to represent conservation of angular momentum in the universe. Ooh, I might do that and all. Me and you then, Barry. I'll do the moat, you do the bailey. Would you fancy a change this year? No, oh, I do not. Traditions are there for a reason. I'm going to nip over there, though. Get an ice cream. You want one? Yeah, nine no, no with sprinkles, mate. Inside a powder blue fortress stands an angel. She has no guile to protect herself. Just this freezer of lollies and 20 gallons of ice cream made with enough love to circumnavigate the whole world. Hiya. Uh, 99, please, with sprinkles and a um, side of lolly. You're a lovely man. Uh, My name's Carly. And Barry looks up and he's caught, captivated by a fragile beauty. And all in one, he feels as calm as butter and as wild as a cat in the wind. My name's Barry. Don't have a cider lolly, have a pistachio cornet. Right. I will call it. And there on that beachfront, around the ice cream van, the air stayed still and warm and time stood still and sweet. Over on the beach, the castle building reached its crescendo. Right, time's up. Let's have a look. Yeah, I win. You can't say that, William. We've all to vote. Well, you've buried Dave and put wings around him. The fins. He's a mermaid. Looks more like a big fat budgie to me. Either way, you're out. Jimmy, you've only dug a moat. Yeah, yeah, well, I've been waiting for Barry to come back from that ice cream van, haven't I? And I don't know what that is, Colin, but it clearly is not a castle. I've done dark energy. Well, dark floor, really. It's abstract. It's shit. That's what it is. I win. Right, I'm going to carry on. Finish off the smaller details. Well, I'll say that's lunch. Come on, to the Mitchell Arms. Can't wait to see old Johnny Edwards again. Mr Edwards! Johnny! Ah, my dear boy! Hail fellow, well met! <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Uh, no Mr Passional this year? Now he's down on the beach still, fussing over his sandcastle. Ah, so, how are we all then? <laughs> well, I hope. How's that museum of yours? Yeah, it's great, thanks Mr Edwards. Well, that's the ticket. Right, well, let's get you all fed and watered. And I won't be taking the orders from you, though. Yes, I've moved aside. New broom and all that. Yeah, you haven't retired, Johnny. 
Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Perish the thought. No, my, my granddaughter, Eleanor, has joined me. Yeah, she's taken charge of the day-to-day -day running of things. New ideas, you know. <laughs> I limit myself to the bar these days. Ah, here she is. Here she is, Eleanor. Raven heard thin lit beauty. We all become who we're pretending to be, and self-constructed artist without portfolio, Eleanor, has been hiding in London, now back to the bay, to give birth to a new piece we found objects. Right, I shall leave you in Eleanor's capable hands. Oh, and I uh, trust we'll see you at the quiz later? Yeah, we'll be there, Johnny. Right, gentlemen and lady, what can I get you? Peace of mind. I want a pie, me. Yeah, and I'll have a cheese back with chips. The menu's changed. There's crostini, panini and ciabatta if you want a light lunch. Or for the hungrier amongst you, today's specials are burfon croute or chicken cacciatore. No, I'm sorry, love. I I've no idea what you're saying. Are you from London? Oh, burfon croute is like a beef pie and chicken cacciatore is like a chicken casserole. Is it? Right, then I'll have the puffin boots. And I'll have a cheese bikini, please. Sorry about this. <laughs> And then, after a squinty burning the back of the next lunch, to the boozy beach for an afternoon nap where the sun bleaches the sky and the sea rolls in like sarsaparilla. A game of cricket, but more like rounders, where the well-struck tennis ball is retrieved at walking pace and dizziness creeps in when bent down for. Ah, oh, it's so perfect here, isn't it? So simple. I cannot remember when I last felt this happy. When I shut my eyes, I can see a big orange shape. Ooh, now it's green. Purple. All this earth. Five million, billion tons of earth. What's that? Oh, oh, no! No! Oh, wait, don't it be stumped! <laughs> well, you're out then, aren't you? No, my, my stump, not this stumps. I've never met anyone like him. He's like an angel. He's coming to quiz. Quiz, yeah. Good shot, Wesley Four. Well, go on then, run your fat knacker. Hey, why is your donkey laying on its back, Wesley? Is she all right? Sunbathing. Early evening, and as the sun casts an orange glow across the bay, our heroes gather shoes and jumpers and view the world through a Lucas Aid filter. They half acidly knock the sand off their tingling skin and head to the Mitchell Arms for the finale. Quiz night. What do you know about out night? Where, as usual, Colin, Barry, and Jimmy enjoy Dave and Diane launching a raging William Passional into an anger fueled orbit. Sponge cake. You've put SC in the periodic table, stands for sponge cake. Well, it fits, don't it? Yeah, it fits. It's scandium. SC stands for Scandium, not bloody sponge cake. Bleeding, hell. Oh, I like that, that, will you, will you? It's a pub quiz. I will never be in their team again, ever. It's bloody embarrassing. You're a very clever man, Barry. You know all about things, don't you? You're learned. Lucky. Lucky more like. Lucky's get so many history questions. See, history's me. Passion. You're passionate. <laughs> yeah. I suppose I am. It's a bit lame, isn't it? I think it's amazing. It's like a map, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's exactly what I think. I like being here with you, Barry. But I've got to go now. I've got to prepare my van for tomorrow. Oh, no, don't. Can't you stay just a little bit longer? No, but, you know, it's all right. We'll be together again. I know it. Bye, Barry. Bye, Carly. Get your drinks off now, ladies and gentlemen. Time, please. Right then, loves young dream. Come on, drink up. Passional's whinging. He's sitting in the van waiting. I wish we could stay here, Jimmy, don't you? Stay here forever. Never go back. Well, I know what you mean, mate. Things seem so, well, simple here, haven't they? Here, look, there's that Father Michael at the window. I'll see one. What do you want? Come in, Father! I'm afraid that won't be possible there, uh, Jimmy. He's barred from these premises, as is his sidekick there. He's barred? You're joking. He's a priest. What's he barred for? Well, I'd rather not say. Let's just say his behaviour is somewhat erratic, inappropriate. 
Don't you live in a caravan round back? No, no, the other one does that. Wesley, he lives in the caravan. And from what I can gather, the priest lives under the pier with that mangy donkey of theirs. Oh, I'll bid you good night, gentlemen. Yeah, good night. Oh, uh, could you say goodbye to Johnny for us, please? Uh, tell him we'll be back. Soon. And out they spill. Out into the still warm air of a summer's evening. Into the moonlit bay. Somehow, the day has made them children again. Happy, innocent children, with the gift of youth, more valuable than money, or fame, or knowledge. Now slowly, sadly realising that the day is over, and they must go back to themselves, their older, bigger, sadder selves. Oh, I don't want to go home yet. No, I don't. Hey, that's the first thing I've heard you say all day, Col. You all right? Well, I need a life of quiet desperation, don't I? Is that your way? It's such a shame. I was just... Bloody van. Well, bloody start. Dead as a doornail. Have you rang the AA? I... There'll be no point. Cancel membership. Morning wanted a walking fridge freezer. Stay. Stay and join us on the beach. Where's the night and have a barbecue? I've got meat. Yes, Wesley's come across some meat. Hey, <laughs> we'll buy then. Well, let's stay. I'm going to nick back in and get some more carry out. Who's up for a night on the beach? Yeah! Hey! No, I'm gone a minute. No, 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 you hang gone. I right, was staying here tonight under the stars. Just one night. Yeah! Yeah! Well, I mean, I mean what, what have we got to lose, eh? Hey, well, we've no left to lose, and that's, that's what true freedom is. Nothing left to lose. Is it cold? One night under the stars. <laughs> one night of freedom. Yeah! And their faces light up, and the stars twinkle in the night sky, and the world turns, and a new life begins. Because when something's got to change, it will do. Now we're jumping so high, off this crumbling wall. In Shed Town, Body was played by Tony Pitts, Jimmy and Johnny by Kevin Eldon, and Diane by Saran Jones. Eleanor was played by Ronnie Ancona, Colin by Johnny Vegas, and Maureen by Emma Fryer. William was played by Adrian Manfredi, Dave by Sean Dooley, and Nicky by Karen May. Carly and Yvonne were played by Jessica Nappett, Father Michael by James Quinn, and Wes by Warren Brown. The narrator was Maxine Peake, and the music was by Paul Heaton. Shed Town was produced by Sally Harrison and directed by Jim Poyser. It was created by Tony Pitts and was a Woolly Bat production for Radio 4. <laughs>